Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It is your girl Adar, and you're listening to the Digital Sisterhood podcast. Last week we had fire smashing conversations with a bunch of us from behind the scenes. It got cut off, so the conversation, inshallah, continues. This is part two. Back in 2020, and I said, um, I had graduated that year, and Adar just said, you know, may Allah bless you in all your endeavors. And I responded back to her, and I said, you know, I said, just so you know, we're rooting for you too, other. And I know that post-graduation, you're going to do incredible things that will touch people's lives. Like verbatim, I wrote that. Wow. I said, may Allah make you successful and great, sis. And I believe Allah is going to answer that. to come that. You know that yes. moment where, like, other was also stressed about, like, you know, her life. And she shared that with me. Yeah, I did. You had, you had the nice reaction. To me, I was just like, how is the CEO of our company saying she's... Because she said... <laughs> I'm unemployed. That's what she said. <laughs> I said, how is the CEO of an entire owner of an entire company saying she's unemployed? What is going on? <laughs> you know, I, I let you have your moment because I, I knew you just wanted to say it out loud. It wasn't like something that you, a lot of times when you're stressed, like you just say things that you want to get off your chest. But I feel like Adel a lot of times it knows the answers because she gives me those answers when I when I'm when I'm uh, feeling it. So, but then I was like walking around, I was like, "Yeah, Allah just help us." You know what's crazy? Also, one of my favorite things is that I'm not in the studio with you, so I can't really give you notes or things like that when you're interviewing. So we do two styles. We do um, our first interview uh, with uh, the guest is just a conversation, just like this one um, that other has with with this uh, with the person, and they just naturally tell us the story. And then after that, we go into the studio after we listen to what we have uh, recorded, and we kind of do a narration version of it, right? So a lot of times when you're interviewing, I hate to cut in and hate to like uh, uh, cut the flow of a conversation. So literally, I would sit there out there and I would say, "Ya Allah, um, let her ask about this," and then, <laughs> or I'd be like, "Ya Allah, oh, let her say something about the time we're kind of running up." Literally, in like a minute or two, that's literally what you would do. <laughs> Wow. Without me having wow. to like, really? Wallahi, it has happened multiple times. So far, I was you like, never said nothing. I, it's just, I think it was meant for this episode. I don't know. <laughs> was, you know, I was just like, Subhanallah, because it's like, uh, you know, when you're directing or, or you're producing, there's things that you're worrying about. Sometimes people are too into the story that they. They, they lose track of things. But then I'll just make that to and Subhanallah, you would pivot. And I would be like, that is one of the most like beautiful manifestations of like when Allah says ask me and and and, and he will answer that's Subhan crazy yeah. you know it's funny uh, just for context um i'm in toronto mm. one is in egypt but for a big part she was also in minnesota um and how studio set up is that i'm in so Muna and I were like, okay, let's do a podcast. So she's like, I'll find a studio in Toronto, which I thought was crazy because how a girl from Minnesota finding a, a podcast studio in Toronto, but she found one that was 18 minutes from my house because you asked me, where do you live? Because you didn't want it to be somewhere far from me. And I was like, when I showed up to the place, I was scared because I saw a white man with really long hair. <laughs> he looked like he was like um, a member of the Fufu Fighters. And I said, he's going to see a bunch of naqabis and he's going to tell me, hell no. You know, I was scared. I was like, oh my God. And I, that day I came with a gang of Naqabis. And he's probably <laughs> thinking, this is, are we in Saudi Arabia? Like, what is going on? And so we came in there. He just looked at me. Are you uh, Adar? I said, yep. He's like, okay, come with me. Go in I'm cringing. His studio is beautiful, by the way. Um, I didn't know much about him. And then I hear Muna, like he has this beautiful setup. And then I hear Muna speaking from his speakers. So Muna is connecting through Zoom. And she's talking to me and Jonathan and then her. Like, we're all three talking to each other as if one is in the room, right? And then he sets me up. He puts in the headphones on my head. He, he adjusted it. And I can hear one in my ear. Like, you know, literally in my ear. And we're talking to each other. So whenever I'm interviewing, I can hear Muna adding notes. She'll tell us to pause. Or sometimes she won't say nothing at all, you know? And, um, and I always assume that's a cue of you're doing good. Keep going, you know? That's always, a, that's always our rhythm. Um, or sometimes I'll, I'll pause and say, hey, Mun, do you have any questions? And so when it plays like a director through in the studio, like, you know, and there's times where even on top of that, she ends up being like my vocal coach. She'll be like, OK, say it with enthusiasm, you know, especially when we're doing narrations. Uh, I, sometimes I'll get a little jumbled in my head. Like my brain is like running 500 miles an hour and she'll just slow it down. She'll say, listen, say it like how you say it, you know, like say it how you tell stories. And she'll tell me she'll stop. Like, it doesn't sound like you. 
or like she'll say can you say it in this sentence frame or she'll you know one is literally a filmmaker audio you know like if there was a <laughs> filmmaker that was doing an audio i was an actor and she was a woman making the stories piece it together so as much as somebody might be at awe of like how i'm storytelling imagine the person putting the story together who is who has seized the beginning middle and end at all times um, and I find that so miraculous because I can't see what's coming, but it doesn't matter can see it coming, what's going to come and already how it's going to be part together. And so it, it's almost like we're an instrument and although we don't listen to music, but it's like a, a melody of different sounds blending together and bringing this beautiful sound, you know, and, and each uh, r- like uh, instrument is bringing a, a unique thing to it that makes it such a huge, you know, and I feel like we're all like that. And so, um, yeah, and that's how Muna produces the episode from all the way where she is. And you have to imagine, like, Muna moved to Egypt. You moved to Egypt can midway. We, can we talk about that? Yeah, can we ta- yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Can we talk about that for a second? Because mm. what I find so incredible about that is the first episode I actually stepped into in terms of the studio with Jonathan and with Adar um, was Hilal's. Mm-hmm. And I think at that point, Adar was doing the third re-recording of that episode mm. and on the way to the studio uh we were talking in the car and hello was saying like i didn't want to say this i didn't want to say that like i didn't like the way that i phrased this at, at this first point and her and other were talking about like what's your story what's your narrative right and i sat down with hello and i was saying like like tell me the story because i i feel like this happens to all of us we hear parts of people's stories in real life and we think we know the whole story right and i feel like because hello is so well known in our community a lot of us had heard bits and pieces of Hilal's story, but we've never really heard it from Hilal directly. except To like beginning the, and end. To beginning and end, except for her most close and private friends like Adar was. Um, and so I had that experience with them in the car and we said like, oh no, and Hilal was saying like, oh, there's this part of my life and there's that part of my life and there's this part of my journey. I was saying like, oh, Hilal, focus on that, highlight that. Like, this is the part that, that leads to like, you know, your, 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 you know, your, the climax of the story, right? And we got into the studio and, 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 and just so you guys know, like these episode recordings are really experiences with the, the guest every single time. And they're so unique and there's so much like lead up. There's so much like different things that happen, different experiences. And, and with Hilal's, what had happened was we got to the studio, Hilal had recorded and Hilal and other, they didn't really feel confident about it. Mm-hmm. Like we went out for dinner afterwards. They talked about it. They said like, okay, you know what? Like we can't do more than three recordings. Like let's just put it out there. Let's see what happens, right? And and I'm like, yeah, yeah, they didn't like they didn't. You guys didn't feel no, the, the first, that was no, some the, fire. No, the, the first studio. recording. Oh, okay. But okay, the okay. third recording, I left there feeling a million dollars because it felt like just me and Hilal talking. That's mm. how I knew it was good. I forgot where we were. I forgot that Jonathan's listening. I forgot Muna was there. And I forgot Sophie was there. You guys are like, so in tune. Yeah, we were, it's like we were in the masala or in her home just talking privately. You know, and those are the private conversations that are lit. You know, like those are the ones that, uh, and we were having it publicly. And I feel like that experience also taught other how to host. Mm, it did. Right? Because, because Hila was our second episode? Yeah, yeah it yeah. was. Our second episode. And, and so like that starting point of like a place of comfort and home for her was so important. And then, if you guys listen to the episode, you hear um, Adan and Hilal talking at the end, and they start mentioning Egypt, and they start saying like, <laughs> um, Adan mentions like, I can't wait for the day that like I get to like roll up into the masjid yeah. and like go to the back and like see you, you do your work, Hilal, right? And that was a dream that was in Hilal's heart, and that was a, a you know a dream that Adan had for her sister in her heart as well. And I think it's absolutely insane that somehow Mona ended up being Hilal's roommate in Egypt <laughs> right that Mona's listening wow. to this dream that Hilal has and like Mona's this girl in Minnesota that others just vibing with and trying to create a podcast yeah. about right it's very intentional though. I, I it, it was it was kind of like when she talked about Egypt I've always wanted to um, study the dean you know so like for me when I have big dreams and I find people who are super passionate about the same dream I like to just like like tie myself to them basically essentially like they're moving like a like very fast and I'm like I'm just going to go with you you know <laughs> so when he let mentioned that that's yeah, sister subhanallah when he let mentioned that like I got my black belt because my sister got my her black belt like oh, wow she was yeah she was uh, uh she started classes and I was like yo I've always wanted to learn martial arts I'm not going to sit in the sidelines while you get your black yeah. belt so I I was like I started doing it and now I have my black belt same with memorization of the Quran yeah 
multi-talented woman right there yeah yeah, mashallah, yeah mashallah. Mashallah. that person every month you find out she has no talent. but guess like, what subhanallah you, <laughs> you know a plot twist we actually had a car yeah. conversation the other day and i looked at her and i said i don't even know you because guess so what mad. i found out so random i'm talking to her randomly and she casually mentions is that she skydived in San Diego. She's like, she jumped out of a plane. I thought that I knew this girl like the back of my hand because we've been intimately talking for nine months. She kind of said, yeah, I, w- I know I jumped out of an airplane. What? I just looked at her like, this is the car, but I said, do I even know you? <laughs> like, how are you? Ca- you had so many opportunities. Whoa, forget that. I even told her, there's a Vi check question called, what is the craziest thing you've done for fun? I was with you when I said that. Why didn't you say that? You know, I did something crazy once. You know, I jumped out of a plane in San Diego. <laughs> no, she's quiet. Forget okay? I... And I said, no, are you spy? I said, are you spy? Is this something going on here? You know, and, and she's like, you know, she's like, sometimes I don't realize my backstory. And then I realized, I'm like, you know what's crazy, Mona? I think I live in the past and I think you live in the present. I really do. And we talk in that way. And I'm always talking about, you know, I used to, because, that, because to, to be honest, storytellers are people that go backwards. Yeah, yeah. Right? So it makes sense why I live backwards. But you always live forwards. And I just was like, that's why it's funny to me. You the know? best love story ever told. It's to, it, it, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta really? compliment each other. But it, 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 I mean, I'm always so curious. I'm like, damn, I really don't know this girl. Today she's gonna tell me something else too. I'm just no, ready. I, 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 no, I, I, nat- I really forget. Like, I... <laughs> Like I, you guys mention it to me, and then I'm like, oh yeah, I did that. Like, <laughs> it's I'm so in the moment of like what I'm doing that I kind of forget what I did in the past, and like people kind of um, uh, mention it to me. But honestly, is 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 uh, what was I talking about? Really Hilal, forgot. Hilal. We were talking about How Hilal. did you be your roommate? We were talking about Hilal. Okay, so then literally after I finished producing Hilal's episode, I posted it, and then I called her. I always call guests or um, message them and just ca- just to kind of see how they've uh, seen the episode or how they like their story to be told, because honestly, they're, they're the most important person to me. Um, how they felt about the episode is what's most important. Like, did I really represent their story well? You know, how did they feel about it? Um, and uh, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, we've had everybody give good reviews, you know. Um, so Hilal, I actually called her and I was like, yo, you're about to be my Quran buddy. That's literally what I told her. I was like, <laughs> you and me are a squad. Like, I, I know you, me and Adar are doing TDS together, <laughs> but you and me are going to become a, a, a squad. And she said, yeah, of course, you know, because I've always learned the Quran. You know, I've, I've memorized the Quran. And my sister was actually the one who actually, <laughs> she started Duxi and she was memorizing the Quran. I was like, you're not going to leave me behind. I'm going <laughs> to. I want to join with you. Yeah. <laughs> and then when I did uh, memorizing the Quran, subhanAllah. But I've, I've, I left it, you know. It naturally happens sometimes. Like, I didn't feel connected. It wasn't part of my routine. I felt like somebody else was making my routine for me and I was just showing up, you know. It wasn't something, I wasn't taught how to implement continuing the Quran in my life or the deen in my life. So even though I was surrounded by the deen, it never was something that was initiated by me. You know what I'm saying? So then after I like uh, became a college student, when you are in this space of like that's very devoid of God and uh, a lot of times you have all these expectations of yourself and expect other people have expectations of you and you're giving money and you're giving all of this, you start to kind of w- feel this... Uh, this um, um, I know the Arabic word. I don't know what the English word. This tightness. That's that's the word. Uh, the, this tightness in your heart and this tightness in your life as you see how much is expected of you. And I feel like uh, I felt that so much that it forced me to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know? And then um, I would listen to other people from other religions talk about faith and God as if like they believed in it. Like I don't know why, but I walked like around thinking of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a concept, you know, oh yes, there's Allah, but I didn't think of it as it, there is Allah, he's your companion, he's the one who helps you um, when you should, when you need help, like, say you don't have food for money, or, or like, or like, somebody's bothering you, or like, you turn to him and you ask him, like, I didn't think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as an actual, you know, uh, something that I walk with, so um, when it came to, uh, things that are my dreams you know i always when i see people are very passionate about it and they're doing all the actions i'm like i'm just gonna follow what you're doing i love the companionship and i'm just gonna do it so when he said that and i called her and i talked to her about quran buddy i thought about yo why don't i go with her to egypt i really sat down and i was like i really don't want he to be in egypt finishing quran without me like, <laughs> i was like, i want to be there too yeah and that's how the, most of the listeners felt right after listening to her episode you're like yeah. uh-uh so she's going like, no, somewhere. She's going. No. 
<laughs> we're not going to do it. So I, I called her. I said, when are you planning to go? She said, oh, around the, uh, the end of the year. And I was like, okay. That, hey, you, that's you know, all you said, that, by the way. That, <laughs> you didn't tell nobody about your plans. <laughs> you said nothing. Sure, sure. Even, you my, just, even my friends were shocked. You know, they're like, what? Because I is is uh, um, I decided in August and I left in September. Was, yeah, uh, the was, end of uh, August, by the way. Yeah, I left at the end of August. It was beginning of September. It was uh, I was uh, doing. Uh, Obviously, we were doing TDS, but I was getting my black belt testing um, end of August. And then also my sister's uh, exhibit was at the end of August. And then I was trying to plan my life for the rest, like after September. And I just couldn't see anything. Like, I don't know. I would try to figure out what I could do in Minnesota or like what my vision was. And it was just blank. Like, I couldn't think about it. I couldn't see anything. And then I was like, one day I was like, wait, it's just a perfect time to leave. <laughs> That's literally what I thought. I was like, it's the perfect time to start somewhere new. To make a run for it. To just, yeah. If, if you have no plans for anything else, I was like, why would you fill your life with something else? Yeah. And I just made the decision. And then I, I, one of the things I was really worried about was my mom. Mm. You know, you worried about supporting your mom. And like, it's because I was like, I'm not going to have like income. But inshallah, with TDS, we're going to have income. Inshallah. But, um, but I was like, I'm not going to have a uh, straightforward income. So one of the things I always used to stop myself from to go and study the dean was to to not have my parents, not have me rely on my parents. You know what I'm saying? Um, so asking my mom for money, it just felt, you know, it, it felt like I was uh, disappointing. I was, uh, you know, doing something completely wrong if I was to ask Hoya for money. And uh, this is what she said to me. I, I was, I randomly, I'm, I'm learning how to communicate because I don't like talk a lot. So I used to think a lot. So I was like, I was like, let me just try to um, talk to her about this that I'm worried about. So I just casually mentioned, I was like, oh, yeah. if I were to go, you know, study Dean somewhere else, because she always tells me, go study, go study, go study. But I never like wanted to put myself in that position where she has to support me. So um, I, she was like, go study, go study. And I was like, I was like, one day I told her, oh, yeah, I want to go study, but I feel like I'm going to burden you with money. Like, I don't want you working and me studying. And then she was like, she was like, subhanAllah. My mom was like, <laughs> subhanAllah, what are you talking about? And she said, go. If you go, you are giving me income and money for my akhira. SubhanAllah. <laughs> which is what matters more. Mm. You know what I mean? And and I was like I was so worried about and like about being a burden here that never it never even occurred to me about my akhirah. My mom subhanallah has been one of the biggest. Uh, she's always taking care of us in the sense of like everywhere we've lived in multiple countries and we've lived in Syria, Emirat, you know, United States. You know, everywhere we went, she made sure we were in an Islamic school. Like she's the one who taught us how to read and write. So she was a huge. Uh, part of the deen and she always reminds us of it and um i know somehow you know the shaitan always takes you places you you start to forget the important things and things like that so when she said that to me i felt like a huge relief and i felt like i was like okay hoyo then i want to go i want to go to egypt i want to go study egypt wow okay that afternoon we went to the tickets st- no she oh, didn't wow. yeah. we went to the ticket place wow. cut my ticket my mom is crazier than me you guys think i'm sp- <laughs> spontaneous my mom is 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 crazier than me I love that. so subhanallah that, that's like the story of me of uh, in egypt and meeting hilal is kind of cool uh, hilal actually has a really cute personality yeah she sounds serious on the podcast but she's actually very funny and cute and, and uh, alhamdulillah that i get to be a part of uh um the digital sisterhood in that way we get to be uh friends that are united and we talk about the deen and we were able oh, subhanallah we're gonna my goal is i'm gonna promise this whoop i'm gonna prop- promise this now we're starting a podcast you I'm, starting, I'm gonna start a podcast with mm. Hilal, well, and what? it's gonna be about the stories of the Quran and Ahlul Quran. Inshallah, inshallah, inshallah. Produced by Beautiful Light Studios. Beautiful, produced by Beautiful Light Studios. Mm. Inshallah. So that's something that people can look forward to. Inshallah, inshallah. inshallah. Now yeah. you gotta keep that promise. You I said will. it. You said it. You said it. You said it. We're looking forward to it. Eighty thousand like people to put heard you. On the spot. Definitely yeah. for sure. For sure you know, there's something about proclamation, uh, saying it out loud. Yes. In, my, in the first episode, what did I say at the end? What did you say? On the, I said. I had made uh, uh, an intention. 
mm. on the mic. Mm. I said, I want this podcast to reach everyone and I want it to be a source of relief. Mm. Like as I said, I said, and, and that was my pursuit. And, uh, and I remember Sophia, was it Sophia or somebody else reminded me? Or was it a TDS like a uh, family member who messages says, either do you remember? Oh, it was. She said, do you remember your first episode? I said, kind of. I never really listened to it again. She said, you made a promise at the end. Mm. And she goes, I don't know if you noticed, but you fulfilled that promise. And I was like, I have to go back. Yeah. So what I promise I made? And I listened to it and I literally started crying. Because you know why? I said I wanted to be a source of relief, you right. know, and I wanted to help people. And she was saying that it helped me. So your your promise your promise came true. Mm. And I was like, there's something about stating your intention on here. Mm. And then going for it and then subhanAllah looking back. Because that's one of the mercies of Allah, right? And we he make so much to offer each other on here. Always. The fans. The Bro, f- we run on dry. Our sisters. There's nothing else we run dry on. Dry and vibes. That's our, the most expensive dry currency. <laughs> That's our most expensive courtesy. I swear to God. Truly. It's the a du'a. du'as people have been sending in. Oh my It's Lord. intense sometimes. Subhanallah. Sometimes are really long. Subhanallah. And I don't even know what to say. Just but I mean. I don't know. Like, you know, I, mean, I couldn't yeah. even say it better. I, I always say, may Allah give you that and more. That's yeah. all I could say, you know? Yeah. Um, but you know, and so I'm glad that you said it. So yeah. when it does happen, you maybe another TDS member will tell you, hey, when I remember when you made that promise, mm. you kept it and it happened. And I think that's really been the running theme of mm. TDS all this time is how much can we take our digital sisterhood and change our lives together and, and do it together no matter where we are in the world, no matter where we're at in our journey with Islam, no matter what we're doing, how old we are, what our circumstances, our trials are. Mm. We've seen that time and time and time again right online in real life that that tds has really been able to do that and the next season and the next year we're just going to do that more and more inshallah with the support of allah yeah. and that's our hope it's I, the healing it really is the healing the that word itself mm-hmm. so many people have come up to us and said that just listening to a story from somebody has been a healing experience mm-hmm. and to me like you know there's sometimes there's some stories that you have been searching for you want to hear that you're not alone that you have a sister and it uh, subhanallah like the feeling that you get when you hear somebody else uh saying that to you is 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 incredible and i think that's really the key part of your dua we're gonna heal your sister promise. together inshallah I, to me it's inshallah. funny because we're healing sisterhood and we're healing each other uh, because our story it's crazy because our stories are connected True. mona is with egypt with hilal studying quran so she can benefit the community back mm. sophia is feeling like she's facilitating something that she's always wanted to be a part of from the beginning i'm here f- i'm living the dua i made a year ago simba is fulfilling a dua she made a year ago and here we are like a bus running you know, and, and everybody has, and, and we all recognize that Allah is the driver's seat. Allah has we're been just, feeling us. Yeah, we're yeah. in the passenger seat looking at the uh, windows of where we're headed. We're like, where are we going this time? You know, where do you think he's taking us this time? SubhanAllah. And every time we're so surprised and so grateful. I can only imagine what Allah has planned for us forward and for not even us, but has what Allah has planned for our tedious listeners. Mm. They're, yeah, well, they're growing too. Yes. They're gro- you know what's crazy? So many of them have started the Quran journeys. So oh. many of them have like... Put on hijab. We're going to talk hijab. about that after Okay, after Makhrib, after Makhrib, Jama'ah, after Makhrib, Barakallah. During this short break, I'd like to remind you that season two is currently in production. And without you, the listener, we don't have any stories. So if you feel like you have a story that is impactful, that will remind people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and bring them closer, that is a great point of reflection or change or growth. One that you want to leave as a, as a sadaqa jariya for you, a never-ending charity for you, please contact us and send us an email at tdsisterhoodpodcast at gmail.com. That's tdsisterhoodpodcast at gmail.com. So, although there's four of us here in the studio right now, mm. right, it's Munasema, me, and Sophia, um, there's also Hanan and... Uh, Lena Ahmed and Asha and Chanel and all these people that played in different um, moments Sada. yeah and Sada Sarah Farah who was in different moments throughout this entire process but it's funny because um, the very one as Muna was saying the very first episode we ever recorded in March it was in March I remember mm. was Lena Ahmed's story which is the episode Pretty Is As Pretty Does and it's funny because although she's a guest she's also a team member yeah. of TDS and it's interesting too because she's also an author who wrote the book that so many TDS listeners have 
um, Beauty Fisi Bila, as well as Custodians of the Dunya, which Sima did the cover art for her second book, Ooh. which is also very interesting how we're all integrated in our lives. Your resume is just it's insane. A, yeah, oh a, my a God. A product designer, graphic designer, artist, yes. as yes. well as a Please book cover like artist. Cover designer. Thank Sima you. does everything. <laughs> Allahumma wow. barik. May Allah preserve I'm sorry. You. If you guys are not hitting her up by the end of this, I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know. Because she does everything. She's a jack of trades and master of all. True. Have you ever heard of that? With a personality. With a personality. Ooh. Oh, no. No, no, you guys have me up. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> I don't say no at all. Well, <laughs> I wish I let So, um, it's interesting because um, I met Lena Ahmed. And by the, by the way, Lena Ahmed is her penmanship name. It's not mm. her real name. Um, and, and she wants to keep, obviously, an alias for a reason because... She has a reason, and one day she'll share why she separates her real identity from her author identity. But um, I had met her. I've always, we kind of been like internet friends for a long time, like maybe a year, but it wasn't, we weren't too like uh, active. Like it was basically in 2020, a sister, I, now that I think about it, I'm telling you stories, I'm kind of a weirdo, eh? Lena Hammond messaged me, and I didn't know her. And she lived in Ottawa, I remember. Yeah. And uh, she messaged me. And she said, hey, I'm doing, um, I'm leading a book club um, of Yasmin Mujahid's book. Um, can you lead the discussion with me? I've never met her, yeah? I don't know mm. her. I never met her. Um, I think we may have followed each other or maybe she followed me. I don't remember. But I said, yeah, why not? <laughs> Every day I say, yeah, why not? I never say no to anybody. If, I think today if, so, if everybody DMs me, <laughs> I might just say yes to everybody. Um, but Lena messaged me and I said, sure. Um, tell me what chapters. I got it. She's like, you do chapter 10. I'll do chapter 9. So I got the book, I read it, and then we didn't even rehearse. We just came to the book club. She read her portion, I read my portion. And at the end of it, she just said to me, Jazakallah khair, Hadi, you're so, you're so cool. I cannot believe you did this with me. You don't even know me. Like, you know, she was like, what? And I was like, no, girl, I think it's dope. I've always wanted to um, read the book, and why not? It's beneficial. Why am I going to say no to benefit, you know? Um, and so after that, I, I followed her back. We had each other's numbers, right? We spoke briefly, and then a year had passed, and then it was... She had, I had found out that she had, I, so basically we started to contact each other more and we were on this app called Clubhouse and she was on it. Hey, it's very, I know it's funny. I remember you guys used to have rooms with just you two on yeah, Clubhouse. Yeah. Cause she's like, you know, she told me she said, let's do a book club on uh, Toni Morris's book, The Bluest Eye. And I told her that book changed my life in high school and really remind, really told me like, Ex- explain to me my blackness and she resonated with that so she's like let's do a little book club or we'll just do us. I said sure you know and one day we were just chatting it up you know and I didn't know who she was like really I didn't know what she did how she lived um anything I didn't even know barely knew her last name and I remember there were people in our room who knew her from somewhere and they were like like so happy to be in the room with her Arabic and, class and I was and I was which cook- is also a book club with well. also another book club which I didn't know right I don't know Lena's resume I don't know her I just know a girl I vibed with that I did a book club with a year ago yeah. so she's like talking and there's people in the audience just listening to her and they're here for her I'm confused and I'm like and I asked I, I don't know who I asked somebody who knew her and I said hey who is this person and yeah. why did everybody come for her she goes you don't know her I said I, she, and she's like, how do you even know her all that? I said, I, I, don't, I know her from the internet. Like, you know? She's like, yo, she's an author. She's a writer. She is really dope. And all of these things. And, like, people are a fan of her, you know? Mm. And I was like, what's the book that she uh, she wrote? She said, Somebody sent me the PD file. It's funny because, like, if you ask Lena Ahmed, I had messaged her in the DMs talking about, hey, you know, how are oh, you? Whatever. Oh, Adad, Adad, you're forgetting parts of the story. I know. See, where everyone did, says that to me. Where, where did you see her book for the first time? I saw it on your, you, oh yeah, she had tweeted, Sophia had tweeted, because Sophia is a tweeter and a writer. And this was an IG story. It was, oh, it was an IG, stuff it was an IG story, and Sophia was recommending the book to her, her the people that followed her Instagram, and Sophia had wrote a synopsis and then took a picture of the back in the front of the book, and I loved it. I said, who wrote this book? And then Sophia said to me, who do you think wrote this book? I said, I don't know this person. She goes, no, you know this person. And in the book, the author says, Lena Ahmed, so she's like, told me her real name. She goes, the girl I did the book club with wrote this book? You're out of your mind. And she goes, yeah, she did. And I was shocked. I said, how does this girl who writes so incredible, right? And I only read like three pages. How come nobody knew her? I was so confused. And she was so young. I was like, who, how did nobody know her? And then I didn't even talk to her properly. What I did was I took a screenshot of the <laughs> of Sabia's story. <laughs> okay. I asked Sabia to take pictures of the front and back. She took it. I posted all over my Instagram and TDS. And TDS. And I said, if y'all do not read this book, you are out of your mind. 
This book is transformative. It's inspiring. It's written by a girl, okay, in Ottawa, okay, who is so insightful. And this, that, and the third. And I said, everybody got to buy it. And the book is beautiful. It's beautiful. Like, Truly. You know, anybody that wrote be- the book, Beauty, Feet, Be Light, especially, oh my can God. attest to it. You would think this person, like, when I read the book, I just could not, like, she, oh, she was just so, oh, she's incredible. So when I put it on, I put it on blast. I went to bed that night. I woke up the next day. It was sold out. And that's how Beauty Feast of Billy Lab became our first product. And that story nobody could happened, get it anymore. Yeah, that story happened like maybe a week or two right before we started talking about doing a podcast. Nah. Um, All of this connects. Yeah, All of this connecting, right? All of these exactly things are. Exactly. Wow, she was our first guest idea. Like, yeah, was, I remember yeah. vividly seeing that story. I'm like, okay, I'm going to grab it. And then I look at the link and it's sold out. I said, <laughs> and I see a lot of people messaging me either too. They're like, oh, it's sold out. Where can I get it? So. Yeah. I'm no, that was our first somebody said to me for Australia, who are you, other? And why is it sold out two seconds, bro? Like, I just, we just saw this today, and I'm a day before you. So so, so, so people are saying, we're here a day before you, yeah. and we and it's already sold out. And I was confused. I said, where did these people come from? Well, I Allah sent them, because clearly, she wrote that book a while ago, by the way. She didn't yeah. write the same year. 2017. And it, and, and it was only in 2020 that it blew up, yep. okay? Yep. Qatar Allah, sometimes, and this is, a, this is a good reminder to my listeners about, sometimes you might do something, and you might think, oh, it's not gonna, nothing is going to come of it. And you have no idea what Allah has planned for it. So when it, 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 it I remember Lena was shocked. She's like, either you don't even know me and you took it upon yourself to blast it. I said, listen, it's not even about you. You wrote something completely incredible about Allah. You know, and it was so beautifully done. And you did it. Like, I'd never seen an author just chilling, you know, like, from the same background. In my head, like, publishing is a, is a white community. You know, yeah. like, publishing is a white industry. So to see her, not only that as a black Muslim woman, but writing about Allah and writing in such a beautiful manner and doing it anyways, even if nobody read it. Mm-hmm. She didn't care. She mm-hmm. read it. She wrote it for herself. Yeah. And it was so beautifully done. I was like, everybody deserves to know it. And after that, I, I, I told Lena, I said, you know, listen, I know this is like, you know, I don't want to corner you or anything like that, but can you be part of like what I'm doing? She goes, whatever you say, I'm there, I'm posted. <laughs> and Sipi already knew her and stuff like that. And that's how Lena joined TDS. And now until today, like her book was the first thing we ever launched under TDS. And when I tell you like, and I think Lena would agree to this is that I don't think she knew how much you would give her, you know, like it has literally, we had the, out of all our products, we don't have too much, but out of all the products, Lena Hammond's book is the most sold and most money. Like, most money made yeah. was Lena's book. And can Mashallah. I say, I believe out of all the products, it's it's the most authentic to our vision. Mm-hmm. Truly. Really, Truly. Really, really. I was transformed by that book, to be honest. I was, I was, and I love that it w- it's a short book. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. not long. It's a, like, so I keep a, telling her she has to make a second version that's longer. Keep saying. I know. I like that it was short. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you, you guys are book readers. But short like, for me, <laughs> I really loved the way she explains uh, um, things and it's very thought through. It's like, you know, it's like someone who did like a paradigm shift to like every conversation. Like they flipped the entire conversation where whereas uh, there's so much propaganda that's thrown to, uh, on us like in the West of mm-hmm. what to believe and how to define things and what's right. And I felt like reading her book, the concepts of beauty and what is beautiful and everything was flipped on his head mm-hmm. um, into the proper. It was like our whole life we're looking at something upside down and then she comes through with this book and just kind of flips, flips it upright. It. She just switches it just a little bit and you're like, oh, wow. wow. I yeah. never saw oh, it that way. That. That's how amazing that book was. Yeah, was especially paradigm. when she uses a parallel about the sky. Yeah. No, and every the, parallel, I was shook. Every single um, oh, chapter in that book is about how the written so alone. beautifully. Is a manifestation yeah, and with of so beauty. much care. Yes. And how yeah. that, that's our role model. That's our basis for yeah. beauty. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Pause. I know. The story is getting so good. But wait, I have a message for you that you're going to want to hear, okay? Have you been looking for an opportunity to reconnect your faith by building a relationship with the Quran? Or even learning Quranic Arabic? Or even getting your questions answered about different rulings? Well, let me tell you. The Ribat Academic Institute is an online program that provides traditional Islamic education for women by women yes you heard me right islamic education for women by women yes all the courses are taught by female scholars allah mabarak you have you have a choice from over 50 courses ranging from sira to tajweed to fiqh and hadith 
You can even take in classes like the nine names of Allah or purifying the heart or the reflections from the Quran and the lessons from the life of the Prophet Wasallam, as well as a Mentorship Matters program on how to guide and support and help others. Rabat's online classes have been reconnecting Muslim women from all around the world with their faith and helping them reclaim their traditionally held leadership roles in Islamic scholarship, mentorship, and community care. All classes are held live online and recordings are posted after class. And the courses, guys, the courses are affordable. They're not expensive at all. They also provide country discounts and scholarships are available. Scholarships are available. So there's no reason why you shouldn't sign up. So if you're interested, visit Robata, that's R-A-B-A-T-A dot info, I-N-F-O forward slash T-D-S and register today. The, the Prophet was a manifestation of beauty. And even that she used um, the eyes in Hadith Nukwa to prove yep. what she was saying. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I was just was like, and I looked at her and I said, you remind me of great scholars that used to write books after books sometimes in jail. You know, sometimes, you know, and like some of them, and there's so much more, you know, scholars that didn't, nobody knows, you know, like they just wrote, you know, these are people that have to, they have a talent. Allah has given everybody a gift and it's important to use your gift. And I'm just so proud of Lena because she uses her gift, you know, like everybody literally has a gift. It's not, it's not to say, oh, every, these people are unique. Nobody's really unique. Everybody has a gift. Whether you access her or not, it's there. And it's, and the question remains, are you going to use it for Allah's sake? And so Lena using her gift for Allah's sake is totally TDS's brand. You know, because we're all using our gifts that Allah has given us, bestowed us for good. You know, and I think that's the, the real testament of life. So when, and every day I'm so proud. Every time I see Lena, Lena gets money, I'm like, look at TDS paying for a mm. black woman stuff. Like it's just, it's lit. It's to me, it's so incredible that I like TDS could be part of funding women, you know, for the great work they do that's faith-based. So that's kind of like a, a, a dope thing that like TDS has done thus far. But anyways. There's also Hanan, which we've we've we sprinkled about over the episode. But Hanan is like Hanan's just cool. Yo, Hanan I don't know. Is, I cool want is. her life. Like, love him about it. I, <laughs> I'm hurt amazing. right now somehow that I've met with Seaman one in real life before Hanan. Yeah. And Hanan lives no, in Toronto. And you, she lives in Toronto. I have to rectify this. She doesn't actually live in Toronto. She's visiting Toronto. Toronto yeah. She actually lives in Saudi Arabia. You know, mashallah. She lives 20 minutes away from the, the haram. You know, and I remember like she, Hanan was that, and I don't mean to bring her back because I know she's a very private person, but mashallah, she was always a person that had a particular vision. She's always wanted to live in a Muslim country and that she wanted to go for the things that she wanted. Mashallah, she did it. She's that person. She's very tunnel vision. Like, I'm going to live here. I'm going to live like this. I'm going to raise my kids like this. And, you know, and she's doing it every day. And, and the crazy part is that her lifestyle, she doesn't use it to just gatekeep. She's forever giving us da'wah to move there. Come on, Adar and Muna and everybody. You guys can move to Saudi Arabia. We can make this a Saudi Arabia. Like we can, we can do digital story over there. We can find great stories over there. And um, and she's a jack of all trades, bro. She does so much, and she says it so casually. Yeah, I did that before. Yeah, I did that. like she was yeah, like she introduces her. Hi, my name is Han. Yeah. yeah. And like one time, I was asking her because actually I was contemplating going to teach in, in Saudi, Saudi Arabia. Arabia. Yep, I was talking about moving there. Mm. Um, uh, before I decided Egypt. Uh, I I told her, Yo, can you send me your resume? I want to like kind of know how no. I should say, bro. This girl's insane. Allahumma <laughs> <laughs> barak. That's all. Allahumma barak. Allahumma barak. She does was like, so much. I was like, you. Oh. <laughs> who is this person you know what I mean she's it's very humble Allah. very yeah, humble like you would I mean I mean you would have never known but yeah. the crazy thing about Hanan and part of TDS is that when I started Digital Sisterhood it was in the summer of my birthday is when I launched mm. but I didn't say that from August 11 up until December I actually did nothing for TDS mm. actually this is when I stopped contacting Sima and I went on a highest for four months mm. Now, if you remember Muna, Muna Mills' episode, A Year of Sorrow, I had a year of four months of sorrow. Um, I was going through something really personal at the time, and I couldn't, I just felt really sad. It was just weird. Now that I think about it, it could have been seasonal depression, but there was a time where I stopped everything, and I just, um, I hated where I was in life. I hated what I was doing. I didn't like what I was, like, and I just felt so uninspired and um, isolated. And I remember I just stopped using social media, stopped posting, I stopped doing everything. Like, and Simba can attest to this, I stopped I disappeared, you know, and I was in this really dark place, um, which I don't think a lot of people noticed. Mm. But somebody I had spoken, you know, that I known over the years, but I hadn't spoken to consistently, calls me one day from Saudi Arabia. And Hanan calls me and I hadn't spoken to her in a year at that point. And she says to me, Adar, assalamu alaikum. I said, 
alaykum salam. And she's like, where are you? What happened to you? And I said, what do you mean? She goes, I feel like something's wrong. Mm. And I said, um, like, well, where did you get that from? She goes, I can just tell. Like, you're not on social media. You're not doing nothing. I, I think you're, there's something wrong. What's wrong? Tell me what's wrong. And I was like, I started crying. Just as soon as she said, what's wrong? Bah! I just started sajabbing in my room. And she's just looking at me. She goes, just talk to me. Breathe. Like, just talk to me. I know something's wrong. And I basically explained to her what I could explain is that I felt this intense sadness about, like, where I was. But I didn't know where. Like, all of these. And I was focusing on the wrong things. And she just kept saying, I, I, I understand you. And she just kept, she just, I remember she even sent me a hadith. I forget what, which hadith it was. But basically she said, oh, this is a part of life. It's normal. Don't like think that you're going to be in this really dark place forever. Um, um, can I give you one advice? And I said, yes, please. <clears throat> Any advice. She said, what have her happened to TDS? And I wow. said, um, I stopped working on it because I don't know where I'm going with it. I don't understand what I'm doing. And I feel lost. And I feel all these things. And she says, go back to it. You were doing something really incredible. And then she started just affirming. She's like, you have an extraordinary vision. She goes, out of all the people, because this is how Hadad, like, Toronto's like a dark, she's like, Gotham City. Toronto's like, you know, <laughs> she left the, the prison cells of Toronto City, right? <laughs> so she's yeah. like, out of everyone in Toronto, she's like, I believe you are, are going to do something with your life. Everyone I know, I know something special is happening for you, but I need you to see it for yourself. And I was like, but I'm just by myself. I'll help. She to me, I'll help you. What do you want? I'll help you. No problem. And this is Hanan, you know? She, she's done so much. And she's talking about, I'll get you this. I'll get you that. Don't worry. Just every day, do a little bit. Right? Let's talk about your vision. Let's talk about... Like, she... And, and, and I was... At that point, I had stopped talking to Simba. I was like, I don't know if Sina is still in the same place to help me. And, like, she's like, ask. Like, do you need to focus on TDS, bro? This is great work. And I think there's something there. And I just want to tell you, go there. Go that way. Forget about everything else. And if it wasn't for her call, I don't think I would... None of us would be here. You know, and Hanan, and then now, wallahi, she sends me messages every quarter when we do great things. Can you believe? <laughs> Can you believe when I, the call I gave you and where you're at now? Allahu Akbar. Has it She's, even been a year? No, it hasn't. Well, it, it, TDS has been a year. We celebrate oh, our year anniversary. Yeah. yeah, but it, oh no, the phone call is actually December, or actually something at the end of November, maybe early December, end of November, actually, last mm. week of November. So right now, Subhanallah! Wow. I didn't just peep right now. It was it was this time because the first week of December is where I started working on TDS. I contacted Sima again, and um, I started. And then when I reached out to me in January, yeah. and I contacted Sabia in March. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Like this is where everything came together. Was that was that period? But yeah. it wasn't until Halal Halal spoke life to me yeah. and said to me, "You can do this, and I'll help you." And yeah. um, and she always says to me, "Look." Look at a, a small conversation, how Allah put the pieces together. Yeah. Um, and I just, that, that's an, such an important part of the story because Hanan played that like revival, like, okay, you know, like for refocus. And I needed her to do that or it would have never, never happened. But I think everything happened the way that Allah planned. You know, and truly for that. What? Who's the MVP of this? God. God. God, God Almighty. If we're, if we're <laughs> confused, <laughs> Rabbil Alami. Rabbil Alami. Oh my God, that slogan is everywhere. <laughs> now I became like. Who knew Hilal so was going to become an icon? I, I, <laughs> you know, ironically, Hilal didn't come up with that slogan. Who came a with sister it? named Yusra from Toronto Whoa. came up with that slogan. Yusra is forever coming up with the best she, one liner. She, she, she has the biggest, pers best personality ever. And I, and I feel like I need to give her flowers because that's her slogan She's that we all took. There's so many, so many sisters in Toronto who there are a lot of flowers throughout the Absolutely. So even my personal friends, like my friends on the side, your friends, all of these people, all people gave me money. They said, mm -hmm. "Here, take the remember We were looking for money for the episode. Yeah, 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 yeah. you gotta no? shout them out like, like, it's, like, um, like it's the Oprah show right oh now. Oh my God, there's so many friends. Ismahan was one of them. He obviously he all played both frontal and she was and she did it in her she story. She was she drove so many of us to that studio you know what, every you know, day. I, I always say this. Um, if he did, so for me, like as a as a producer, I, I I want people to open up, but you can't force people to open up. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. the, the the stories need to be authentic and natural. And so one of the things that always is amazing to me is how every single guest we've had on the podcast is a good storyteller. Mm. That is very, like, rare, you guys. This is not, like, very mm. common, you know. Many times a lot of people have a good story, but they don't know how to tell it, you know. And uh, subhanAllah, everybody was able to, to relax and be able to really 
tell the vulnerable sides of their story to really open up about something they've kept to themselves for so long you know um and i i always say hilal gets the edge for that because it's like she started she, the tone I, if she had not opened up yeah um the reason we recorded three times was because the first time she told us our story but she told us her quran story and she casually mentioned that she was divorced and i was like Oh, this, this is very interesting. <laughs> But then I had just met Hida yeah. and, and, and it was amazing. So then I, I was kind of contemplating about it and thinking about it. And then um, I don't know if I mentioned it to you or you mentioned it to me. But I remember thinking, subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, me, me and Adar think very similarly. This is one of the things I love. And so uh, a lot of times I've seen that where I'd, I you would say something and I'd be like, yo, I was just thinking that. And then I would say something. It's one of the beautiful um work uh sp- things you wish you have yeah. uh, when you're working together with someone and so one of the things that we said oh i wish i wish uh, we could go more in depth in that and um you said yeah i feel like there was something missing from the story mm. and i was like yeah and then we were like oh let's just do it again let's just uh dig deeper and we have um we could book more studio time to me it's, it's less about money it's more about the uh the the um how do i say the i'm missing a word <laughs> the it's, the it's not the, val- the, the quality that's the word i'm missing the quality of the uh the story that's told you know what i mean it doesn't matter how many times you have to re-record it. it doesn't matter how many times like we may uh hold on to a story there's a couple stories that we're holding on to if it wasn't for hilal it really if it wasn't for hilal opening up about her story and going deeper i don't think it would have been a safe space because there's so many podcasts that are created where it's people having dialogue and people having conversations but rarely do people go there you know mm. talk about those things and subhanallah i feel like a lot of times our episodes uh each episode is speaking to somebody who has been i think talking to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who's been asking for something mm. and um the stories come to us we rarely like uh we ask a lot of times other's friends but the type of story they're going to tell we don't know you know we it, it comes out and it's uh i think a lot of times there's a lot of uh people who were dealing with the stigma of divorce mm-hmm. i think um that's why we've had a lot of divorcees in the beginning we had yeah. like four or five you know people you know they asked if people asked us if we were intentional yeah. about that no subhanallah I, i always think it's allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then we had people talking about pain and it right was, it was divorce and then it was pain and then it was grief grief and, and mental, health, mental well. health like it was it was such beautiful stories that it was like uh, and then it was love you know it was mm-hmm. success and success and relationships and reflection yeah. yeah and then um my question is can you guys tell me um a moment where you felt the man manifestation of the sisterhood that we've been working on for so long you know we're called the digital sisterhood what's the moment like you you saw it and you felt it i think <laughs> so i think I, yeah, from yeah. from doing the cover art um since i oh i i really felt that from my own art but it it's a different feeling from the digital sisterhood because it's it's real genuine stories like again how you said um how he laughs at the tone and i think the the other reason where why people really love listening to the digital state is like it's like having a conversation in private but it's in public mm-hmm. and and bringing a lot of these genuine um discussions on mental health pain and love in 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 such a caring way and that's also also the same thing that I, i wanted to do with art so i was i got to see sisterhood in in not just storytelling that way but in, in art too Because when I was talking to the guests, it's like, it's real conversations like, okay, what do you have in mind? And, and like how people react to that or how people take in to what the episode is about just by looking at the art. So mm-hmm. I really felt that from the Little Sisterhood and I, I felt like people's responses to it is, 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 is already like the result of what we're doing and why, why the name is the Little Sisterhood. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. What is a... Uh, When was the time you felt that, Muna? For me, um, subhanAllah, I, 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 I first got glimpses of it when I did the, my sister's exhibit and people would come up to me and they were like, oh, I listened to the sister. And it was like the first time that I started seeing people and meeting people. I was like, oh, wow, okay. Um, but I think the biggest manifestation of it was um, the conference. 
the conference with uh, Abu Bakr as Siddiq that it was day. insane. Yeah, mm. it was insane. Um, <laughs> because there was a after we did our panel, there's a lot of people who were like, "Oh, it's too short. We want to talk to you guys more." So we said, "Okay, let's just set up a Q and A thing, um, and let's just tell people to come to the masala." Uh, so then I was in the masala right before people started coming in and then I went to grab something and then I came back and then I opened the door and I just see <laughs> this room. <laughs> I don't even know how many people were in it. There uh. was so many people in it and it was just a tiny room and everybody was sitting on the ground and there was literally no place to, to, to stand, stand. There, was there was no place and they were all tight together <laughs> like it's tight okay together. everyone's like chilling like oh my god this is what we're here for <laughs> i literally i was standing there and I, just, I i felt like there was hearts looking at me yeah i remember you said that, that. I, that moment. I was yeah. like wow i still like think about it to this yeah day. It's, subhanallah it's interesting because um i was gonna say that there's two moments where i knew I felt the manifestation sisterhood was when, because as you said, Hilal's episode set the tone, right? Mm. And I remember many people were like, "How are you gonna beat Hilal's story?" You guys remember? So many people said that. How are you guys gonna? How are you guys gonna top so Hilal's story? Top it? Why did you guys do this to yourself? Yeah, was the question. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> and we're like, no, we're here to tell as much stories as possible. Yeah. They don't want to actually compete with each other. There, every story speaks to someone. And that's exactly what they did. And I'll never forget, like, hearing um, sisters come up to us or send messages saying that money and story meant something to them because they were also dealing with an illness, you know, or uh, a, a chronic pain. Or people were talking about how they were on a Quran journey just like Hilal was. Or there were other women coming up to me saying uh, how much they resonated with Lena Ahmed's story about so beauty. Please. Yeah. And saying how, like, I I felt what she was talking about. Or how many, oh my God, when I was at the conference, so many people talked about, like, uh, um, when the Cali found true love, how much they loved her transparency and her honesty about it. And then, oh my God, there was just so many people loving everything. There was not a space, nobody, oh my God, especially me being shocked that people loved my story. I was shocked. I was like, me? Out of everyone? They said, yeah, because. Like when you talked about like learning Dean at an older age, you know, mm. and feeling that shame. And I was like, like, oh, I will never forget the first message we ever got from a sister was was a sister that listened to Hilal's episode. And she told she had messaged Hilal and she told Hilal that her episode saved her life. And I was like, I was confused when Hilal told me. I was like, what does that mean? She goes, apparently sister was going through a really tough time and she was contemplating ending her life. And there's something, so a friend of hers sent her Hilal's episode. And she said to herself, Qadrullah, let me just listen. Maybe this might help me. And she said, when she listened, she immediately messaged Hilal saying, Hilal, your episode literally saved my life. And I was like, and I'm sitting there, and by the way, you know where we were, when Hilal told me this, we're heading to the studio. And I'm looking at the window, and Hilal's looking at the window. We're both confused. And we're shocked. And then Hilal goes to me like this. She says, this is a huge responsibility. Adar. And I said, I know. She goes, this is a huge, huge responsibility. And I said, why? She goes, you can't stop. If you're getting this on the gate out, we, we none of us can stop. Like, it just can't be something we did for fun anymore. This has to be something that we put forward ab above ourselves. Like, it's something that we say, oh, we're doing this for Allah's sake, so we make this a priority. You know, just as we make everything a priority, you know, that has to do with Allah. And I, I remember thinking, oh, my God, like, I always carried that. I was like, okay. Um, I hope this episode, I always think intentionally, I hope this episode saves someone's life. I know it sounds so dramatic, but that, that because I, I saw it, somebody telling me that, I was like, okay, I hope this story saves somebody, you know, from something, you know, or it has them thinking differently. And I know it was doing that, like, and then the second time where I felt a manifestation of sisterhood was obviously when I came to Minnesota in two different tiers, one by the, by the, uh, by the hospitality of sisters that found us. That took us out every... I don't think I paid for a secret ball. Like, I think I paid for two balls. <laughs> like, the whole time, every day, somebody was taking us somewhere. Um, and then, obviously, the conference was wild. Because, obviously, we do the work. We don't really see... Like, we hear, like, the comments and, like, the messages. And maybe the views when you get the analytics. But to see it in body form and human form is a little wild. Imagine going to a conference... I'm looking at everyone. I'm like, oh, everyone's here for the conference. And then when we went on the Q&A, and then we left, and then we went to another room, and then we had to move to a bigger room. Because we stole everybody. Because we stole And then the, 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 the host was saying, where's the audience? Where did the audience go? And then somebody had to tell us, guys, we got to wrap this up because there's nobody in the auditorium. <laughs> everyone's here. And I died of laughter. I was like, oh, my God, this is, this is, this is, this is, this is subhanAllah. And, and obviously, it got very emotional. 
I got very overwhelmed because I was like, you know, like I've I've always wanted to be a part of good and to see it to that level was it took me back, you know, even to see people that I was speaking to privately in the DMs be in person, you know, I could see them. Just I saw Muna, you know, at the airport. It was like, yo, I felt the sisterhood. It, it's one thing to hear it. And I know. But when I went on the microphone. And I'm on the stage. And I said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. To see people's face go, like, like shocked. Because they're like, oh my God, she really in front of us? <laughs> like, I was, I was pulled back by their reaction. I was like, why are they moving weird? Like, why are they, you know? But I realized it's because, like, these people really listen? I've been shocked. They listen to me regularly. And it's, 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 um, it's I, that's when I was like, oh my God, there is real bodies. These, 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 these things that we're doing actually reach people and now we get to see them. And I got, and I feel like I enjoyed being with them, touching them, hugging them, talking to them, knowing their names, like following them on Instagram. I was like, wow, Minnesota is like, feels like home, Aww, you know, and, and yeah. then part of our, our, our TDS team lives here, you know, so this, this is half our headquarters, you know, and so they came out, you know what I'm saying? And so I cannot wait to meet more of them. And, and they, you know, some of us took us aside, told us their stories. I was like, sis, this is crazy. And they're like, no, this is what resonated. And I just want to give a shout out to the guests. Yo, when I, and I know the guests are listening to this episode, right? When I tell you, everybody was name dropping you guys as Marian, I loved Marian's episode, or Faze's episode, or Halima's episode, Asma's or this episode, was Asma's episode. episode, and that, oh my God, village I was like, aunt. I cannot believe I worked with Village Aunt. I know, I, I know. And, over here. and you yeah. know what's so funny? Because I did her episode on my birthday. Subhanallah. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, look at me doing what I love to do, you know? Yeah. But it was a, it's a remarkable situation, and it's just, there, it's only up from here, and I can't wait to do this more, to go to city to city, yo. Like, if you guys are out there, you guys want us to pull up, let us know we are ready. People <laughs> need you in London, San oh my Diego. God. I know. I saw the tweets. I, I saw the tweets. I saw South Africa. I said, oh, oh don't get I me excited. I need to see the plane tickets. The pl- <laughs> 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 well, I, mashallah, Minnesota paid for all yeah, of our plane tickets. They yeah. didn't even leave any of us behind. Um, and shout out to them because they get, they get, they started this. So if this goes any further, you know, Minnesota deserves their accolades because they are the ones that said they deserve this. And they deserve, I was. We got to shout out Samaya for that. Also, shout out to Samaya. 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 Shout out to the message. Last thoughts. Last thoughts. This episode is brought to you by Beautiful. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, last, last, thoughts, last, last reflections. Thoughts. Last reflections. Sophia, you've watched this from there. Oh, I have a question. Actually, we can yeah. bounce off of this last reflection. What do we hope to see TDS do in the future? Like, I, since we started the podcast with intention, mm. let's make a, a an intention. Like, yeah. what do we want to do and see for ah. TDS in the future? Speak it into the mic. Yeah, let's speak it into the mic, man. I want TDS to help change sisterhood worldwide. I want us to be a vehicle for healing sisterhood, for redefining sisterhood, for for really connecting Muslim women worldwide, no matter what language you speak, no matter where you are in the world, no matter what your circumstances are. This is very like years, maybe Allah knows, like, but in my head right now, it's years and years away. But if TDS could even just be the spark that really allows Muslim women to connect with each other, to learn from each other, to support each other, to live with each other in that peace and harmony and compassion, really. People have always spoken about... um how, um, you know, where are our men? And our, our men can change our own. I believe, like, our women can change it first. Mm. And I believe that, that that TDS can help do that. Simultaneous. I mean, the men can support us. <laughs> I mean, they have been. <laughs> and they have been. And, and they, they have been. been. Shout truly. out to the brothers because there Shout are brothers. Out to the brothers truly. There are brothers, mashallah, that are literally they're supporting But so when we step yeah. up and we level up, you know, mm. they're, they're going to have to keep up and keep yeah. pace. Inshallah. Mm. Inshallah. Yeah. I want. I want TDS to be certified global. <laughs> okay. Certified worldwide. Yes. Inshallah. Making Not big bank. O- making big bank. Oh, yeah. Inshallah. And I want us to be able to not only, like, I kn- we already kind of global already, but having more people share their stories, I feel like that is so important for us Muslim women. You need to right hear now. some accents next yeah. season. Yes. Yeah. Some accents. In different languages, too, in mm. Somali and Arabic, in different languages. French. Yeah. French. 
Yes, and you know we have French listeners. I love our French fans. Oh Man. my god, they're so dope. They come through. So and the sisters hard. from Inshallah. Nigeria. Yeah. They're lit. Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan. Yo, wow. all the countries, man. The I look. wish uh, we're going to post, inshallah, the analytics. But that was one of the most beautiful things to see all these lights in different countries that I've never been to, that I never even knew there was listeners and Muslims there. This, it's like we're slowly lighting up the globe. And yeah. one day I pray that we can fill it with light mm-hmm. as much as possible in the My, remembrance of Allah in the remembrance of Allah absolutely yeah, um, there was like islands that we don't even know about yeah. and there's like little circles there like, it became my hobbies oh, yeah. zoom it no no you know which so one that cool. shook me yeah. Honolulu Hon- Hon- who's in Honolulu <laughs> um, I want Hon- them to Hon- invite us invite yes. us Honolulu when I saw it lit up I was shook yeah. I said yeah. who is in Honolulu yeah. who's on vacation yeah. I thought it was somebody on vacation then uh, weeks later they're still there the light is wow. still lit up there. So I'm like, okay, there's clearly someone that lives in Honolulu. Somebody listens. That Mark listens Ford. to TD. Can I tell somebody on vacation? Yeah. Because we be knowing people's business. People are vacationing everywhere, right? Because <laughs> we be seeing a random. And then we realize it's not random. It's there not are people random. living there and listening to TDS. And I was just like, oh my God, this is so intense. You know what I'm saying? But I'm so grateful. And it's all from Allah. Because let me tell you something. You can give Nasiha. You can give advice to somebody. But it's not guaranteed it's going to reach their hearts. What allows something to reach somebody's heart, it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is definite. This podcast has reached where it has needed to reach because Allah allowed it to spread and made sure that it entered every heart because that is Allah. I'm not taking any credit. I'm not that charming. I'm not that charismatic. I'm not that funny. Nope. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you um, are. I mean, I, I am. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but even if she was, <laughs> she, but even but even if she, was she couldn't do it without Allah. Yeah, Allah she could, I could not do it without Allah subhanahu yeah. And none of us could have done it without Allah subhanahu wa so you with that oh yes um i think we first connected because i saw your vision for film mm. and my plan inshallah beautiful light studios to become a film production company and one day tds is also going to work together on a film for the first time i could be part of a film Ooh. oh my god that is gonna be lit visual because i feel like right now i'm just doing a part of what i like mm. but i can't wait to do the thing that i originally truly saw myself doing there's, there's a couple of shows that we're talking yeah. about I mean, I yeah, that a couple of sh- it's, it's gonna, gonna be, come out inshallah inshallah as you guys do do it best the best the, the, the tds fans do is make the best du'as yeah, yeah they, they do du'as. that's the only way we're gonna go inshallah make Allah make everything there's so many people who supported me Allah accept their sadaqah from them and yeah, make a sadaqah I mean. jariya something that lights up your grave and is I always mean. with you and is uh, may Allah you know uh, hadith of al-mar'u ma'a man ahabba yawm al so you are with whom you love Ooh. so since we all are sharing this love together and we felt it in many different ways may Allah allow us all to be together inshallah I mean I mean Ada what's yours my my wow i feel like i feel like it's changed so much mm. i feel like a law is um is pushing me to dream bigger every day it's like he's showing me he's like you doubted me look keep dreaming bigger and bigger and bigger and i think that's something everyone's keeps looking at me like i thought you were thinking too like think but it's because i i never i never thought i could mm. you know and so yeah. tds <laughs> what i dream for it is that it becomes a main stage Mm. I don't want TDS to be a side stage no more. I want it to be a force to be reckoned with. And I hope that it changes the narrative about how Muslims are seen on this planet. We are main characters. We are resilient. We are strong. We are intelligent. We are storytellers. We are compassionate. We are Muslims. We are Muslims and we are chosen. And we are the history of this world. And we are the history and we are the end. Mm. And we are, inshallah, are going to be the people that Allah raised in ranks mm. for it. Mm. And I pray that TDS becomes a reminder to everyone of what it really is. And it, and it, it literally invokes an Allah. It literally says Allah. Like it's a thing that always invokes an Allah. It says, and that's, and that's the promise I made with Allah. And I'm going to keep it. You know that no matter where I go, if I'm on a main stage with all of these incredible people, that I will always praise Allah. And I will say we are here because he brought us here. And this is a message we're here to relay. You know, that our Lord is one. You know, and that he is compassionate and he is merciful. And he is the king of all kings. And he is going to, he is the beginning and he is everything, you know. And he is who we're going to return to. And we are no longer side characters. We always have been 
the reason why, you know, and we're here to facilitate that and that's it. And and we're doing it without any fear. No more fear. No more, no, no more no, fear. No, I'm no done with the, I'm done with the imposter syndrome. I'm done with the fear. Yes. And I want all I want us to be literally an example. And when we get there, inshallah, we will. Like on a big stage, people are going to say It's a reawakening. Those are it's our awakening. It's yes. gonna be and I, and I really and I know it sounds so wild to say it on a podcast, so just like you know, yeah. but I really mean we? it. Who are we? True. You know, but, but we're we? servants of Allah. That's what we who we yeah. are. We're here. <sighs> That's it, man. That's it. Season one. Wow, <laughs> season one is done. So I know there's live there's live audience here. Jazakallah khair for coming, you guys, and listening. You guys listen to four hours we of audio, you. Wow. and you sat here, and I'm shocked you guys are not tired. Not even? Uh, uh, not, even? <laughs> not at all? Not even a little bit. Oh, my God. Yeah. Nobody? Uh, Nobody's uh, exhausted? I can sit. <laughs> <laughs> and we're on a roller coaster. We have a perfect <laughs> ending right now, I mm. believe. Oh, my God. Yes, we, we do. Special One guests. of our favorite people in Minnesota that mm. we have met. That we met here, by the way. Yeah. And she has the most incredible personality. And I remember when we came, she recited the Quran. And she obviously officially became my favorite Quran reciter. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah, Su'ad, please come to the stage. Please come to the stage. Please come to the stage, sister. Sister, come to the stage. You know, Sa'ad is quite literally an example of, of what we, we are hoping to see from young Muslim youth. Yes. She is an incredibly charismatic, sweet and kind 15-year-old oh. girl. We have to hype her up. She is, she is so funny. And she has read Quran for us everywhere on this trip. <laughs> <laughs> and we love her a lot. And so let me tell you before, uh, and it's added now, mashallah, she has a mic and you can respond. So now you're shocked what this sounds like on the back end, right? right? Her jaw is dropping. <laughs> So, so I had, uh, the first, after she, we heard her reciting in the end, she, um, before she came up to me to tell me she's a, like a big fan of TDS, I came up to her, I said, I'm a fan of you, could I take a picture with you? Do you remember? Oh my. I took a picture with you and you looked at me in shock. You said, why are you taking a picture with me? I said, I said, sister, do you know who you are? Did you see what you just did? Bring your, bring yourself close to the mic. Yeah. I, I, I need to take a picture with you. And I took a picture. You were, sh- you were appalled by my behavior and you let me know you were appalled. And then I just saw that just the charismatic and funniness about you and the, and the beautiful, like your recitation is incredible and i asked you can you come on our final episode to recite quran because what a better way to end than uh, what's better than allah's words to close our season so um i know uh safia has a few ayahs she gave to you uh she's gonna give to you right now um and and then we'll have uh Sif- we'll have safia read the english translation inshallah so saad say assalamu alaikum assalamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Not you trying to mock me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Ad, how do you feel? There's a microphone in your face. Well, you always have microphones in your face. If someone told me that I'd be here with the Digital Sisterhood last week, I would tell them, you're lying. You're lying. <laughs> <laughs> you were telling me earlier that um, uh, you've been walking around different this week at home. Why? My ego. <laughs> SubhanAllah. <laughs> SubhanAllah, I'm humbling myself now, inshallah, but I don't know. It's just that I never imagined this. Yeah. Oh, we love you so much, Saad. Saad, I, 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 thank you for being a listener. Thank you for listening. I you know? got you. <laughs> Saad, bismillah. I'm excited for the world to hear your recitation. So, Sophia is going to pass you. Just these two ayahs. These two ayahs. And then, Sophia, you'll be doing translation, inshallah. All right, bismillah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم واذكرن ما يتلى في بيوتكن من آيات الله والحكمة إن الله كان لطيفا خبيرا إن المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات والقانتين والقانتين والقانتات والصادقين والصادقات والصابرين والصابرين والصابرات والخاشعين والخاشعات والمتصدقين والمتصدقات والصائمين 
والصائمين والصائمات والحافظين فروجهم والحافظات والذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرات أعد الله لهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيما Always remember what is recited in your homes of Allah's revelation and prophetic wisdom. Surely Allah is most subtle, all aware. Surely for Muslim men and women, believing men and women, devout men and women, truthful men and women, patient men and women, humble men and women, charitable men and women, fasting men and women, men and women who guard their chastity, and men and women who remember Allah often. For all of them, Allah has prepared forgiveness and a great reward. This episode was brought to you by Beautiful Light Studios. I'd love to give a shout out to Muna Sheikh Umar for producing this episode. I also love to give a shout out to Sa'ad for that beautiful recitation. And I would like to make da'a for Sa'ad. I'm hoping, inshallah, may Allah allow you to recite like that in a few years in the Dubai competition and win. Whoa. That's my dream for you. May Allah make it a reality. I mean. Um, I also love to give a shout out to Minnesota for being so hospitable to all the tedious listeners that I've met and that welcomed us with open arms. Barakallah Fik, you guys have made our trip extremely memorable. You are part of our journey and story um, and we love you oh so very much. I love to also give a shout out to Masjid Abu Bakr and Sister Samaya for bringing us here and setting the tone of how we should come and um, present and just share our message. So Jazakallah Khair for seeing the value and the importance of our work. It is so important. So Jazakallah Khair. I also love to give a shout out to every all of my live audience that are sitting right in front of me. Thank you guys for coming and listening for four hours. <laughs> MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. That is incredible and it means so much to us. I also love to give a shout out to Nomadic Hustle for letting us use his studio space. Allahumma barik, he is incredible for letting another other content creators come and use his space. Jazakallah khair for allowing us to work here and use it. and It just means so much to us. It's just incredible. So Jazakallah khair to Nomadic Hustle. If you don't know who he is, you definitely need to know who he is. His podcast is incredible. Um, so yeah, definitely check it out. And yeah, and that's a wrap of season one i will see you guys next week inshallah for our last and final part of the season thank you for listening and i will see you guys next week in your ear in your speaker telling you a good story assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh